Glover Prize. The Glover Prize is an Australian annual art prize awarded for paintings of the landscape of Tasmania. The prize was inaugurated in 2004 by the John Glover Society, based in Evandale, Tasmania, in honour of the work of British-born landscape painter John Glover, who lived and painted in the area from 1832 until his death in 1849. The current prize amount of $1.50,000 is the highest for landscape painting in Australia. The 2012 award was controversial. The winning picture included a depiction of convicted Port Arthur massacre spree killer Martin Bryant in the landscape of Port Arthur. History John Glover lived the last 17 years of his life in northern Tasmania. In 2001, Mount Wellington and Herbert Tan, with natives dancing and bathing, one of his many landscape works that were sent back to England, was sold for more than $1.05 million. The Glover Prize has been described as a little heart beat, a funny little committee that had a little bit of money and had an idea. By 2019, the prize has attracted 480 entrants. Conditions for the prize The John Glover Society has specified that the prize is limited to works depicting Tasmanian landscapes. 2004 The winner of the inaugural prize was Longford-based artist Michael McWilliams for the painting Bandicoot on a Look Bandicoots are small to medium-sized terrestrial marsupials endemic to Australia. The painting now hangs in the departure lounge of Launceston Airport. His acrylics on linen workbrush blankets was awarded the $3 Euro People's Choice 2012 award. 2005 In the second year of the contest, there were more than 130 entries. The winner was Stephen Charles Lees for the painting Wishbone Ridge. Lees, who was born in Sydney, had lived in Tasmanian since 1992. 2006 Albert artist David Keeling was awarded the third Glover Prize for 45-minute walk near and Topper. The winning work was of orthodox oils on canvas medium. The landscape depicted is part of the Narantapu National Park. 2007 The winner of the prize in 2007 was Raymond Arnold, a Queenstown-based printmaker. The painting in acrylics, entitled Western Mountain Ecology, depicts stacks of freshly sawn Huon pen. The prize amount was then $30.00. 2008 Poet art teacher Neil Haddon was awarded the 2008 Glover Prize for his work per blind, albeit the work is enamels on aluminium and references the cultivation of opium poppers in Tasmanian opium poppy farming industry. 2009 Poet based artist Matthew Armstrong was awarded the 2009 prize for the work transformed at night ahead of more than 250 other entrants. Armstrong's work depicted Mellifont Street, Poet. 2010 Queensland-based artist Ian Waldron was selected from among 272 entries to become the first Indigenous Australian to win the prize with his work Walash Dihar Cockle Creek, a piece created on Tasmanian oak. Walash Dihar in the language of the Aboriginal Tasmanians of that region means Cockle Creek, a location in Tasmania that Waldron described as significant both archaeologically and as a site of positive exchange between Indigenous people and French Marinos during the late 18th century. 2011 the 2011 prize was awarded to Launceston artist Josh Foley for Gilles Lockhart. The all painting included pumice in its media. The painting depicts a disused building on the hill overlooking Cataract Gorge in Launceston. 2012 The 2012 winner was awarded to Launceston-born Sydney resident artist Rodney Popwell for the work Port Arthur. 2013 The 2013 competition attracted 303 entrants. The prize was awarded to Sydney artist Janet Lawrence for a work titled Plants I View and depicted a close-up view of floor from the Tarkin region of northwest Tasmania. 2014 The 2014 prize had 42 finalists. The winning work was looking south from the labyrinth to Enti Olympus and Lake St. Clair by new Norfolk-born artist Mark Rudder. 2015 The winner of the 2015 prize was Nigel Hewitt for his work woven, created using wood ash from the 2013 Donnelly bushfires. The work, chosen from 282 entries and 42 finalists, features a forest at Nt Barrow in northern Tasmania. Hewitt divides his time between Perth, Western Australia and Hobart, Tasmania. 2016 In 2016 the prize attracted more than 280 entries and was won by David Keeling, making him the first artist to win the prize twice. He also won the prize in 2006. Keeling's painting titled Low Tide, Soft Breeze, depicted a coastal track in the Narantapu National Park, an area that he often uses as a source of inspiration. 2017 2017 saw the Glover Prize awarded to Raymond Arnold, making him a two-time winner of the award, having achieved this also in 2007. Arnold's work was titled La Barque de Dante slash Macquarie Harbour Party Barge. 2018 The 2018 Glover Prize was awarded to Halink Orsilok for the work Ponies, a painting of playground equipment at Cataract Gorge, Launceston at night. Orshilok's work rec was one of the 35 finalists in the 2014 Sir John Salmon Prize. 2019 
After a record-breaking year with over 480 paintings that entered, the 2019 Glover Prize was awarded to Pace Greville for the work Pedder Prime Cuts, an oil and acrylic painting of Lake Pedder at Tasmanian Glacial Lake. 2020 The 2020 Glover Prize was awarded to Tasmanian artist Robert O'Connor for his piece titled Somewhere in the Midlands. O'Connor's painting depicted a large chunk of meat sitting on a bed of mashed potatoes with peas and gravy shown in front of a Tasmanian landscape. O'Connor had been a finalist in the Glover Prize four times prior to 2020. 2021 The 2021 Glover Prize was won by Herbert artist Sebastian Galloway for a work titled View of MT, Lyle Through an Acid Raindrop. The work is all paint on copper. The artist stated that the copper medium reflected the mining history of Queenstown. 2022 The 2022 Glover Prize was won by Victorian artist Jennifer Riddle with her work titled Wanderings of the Past and Now. The work is a synthetic polymer on canvas and depicts Port Davy in Tasmania. 2012 Award Controversy The 2012 award winning painting depicted Port Arthur and included a representation of Martin Bryant holding a gun. The award received criticism. A former police officer who attended the scene of the Port Arthur massacre described the work as insensitive and outrageous. The CEO of the Port Arthur Historic Site Management Authority was reported as stating that depictions of the massacre were unhelpful to those it affected. Popple addressed the criticism, arguing that the depiction of Pyant was a reminder of the brutality of the Port Arthur prison colony within a green surreal beauty landscape.